All right, CNT 120, Chapter 3 Lab. We looked at MAC addresses. We looked at looked and worked with IP version 4 and IP version 6 addresses, and we looked at port numbers so far. Last type of addressing we want to look at is domain names. Now we're going to do we're going to look at domain names on the Windows side as well as on the Linux side, and we're going to do similar things, but they're going to be a little different. So let me start with the Linux VM this time. I'm going to bring my VM back, and then Chance Start has, you know, kind of locked itself out uh, from just sitting here. So the password should be CNT class, just like the regular desktop. I'm going to open that back up, and it kind of left off exactly where I was before. I'm going to close these out for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open the browser over here, and I'm going to use a website called GoDaddy.com. Some of you probably have seen ads for. Here's Firefox in the bottom bar down here. I'll launch that, and I might say it's kind of old because this virtual machine hasn't run a whole lot here. Um, that's fine. Let it do its thing. Okay, yeah, all right. No, that's fine. We'll just open up a new tab, and I'm going to open up um, www.GoDaddy.com and load that. Now, what this is, is this is a site where I can look up a domain name that I might want to purchase for use and actually purchase it to own it that I could use this as part of my business, setting up my business, my business presence, my web presence, that sort of thing. So I'm going to pretend in here that we're going to look up a website called Networking is Amazing or something. Maybe that's a new website I want to create. So Networking is amazing and we're going to see is this domain available now a website like this allows me to purchase a domain name and it registers it with the dns databases the whole way up to iana numbers internet assigned numbers authority uh, but chances are what will happen is um, if i buy this it's going to get updated to the top level domain authority the .com or the .net or whatever it is, um, and then that will eventually update itself to IANA. So this is now going to go out and query and say, hey, is this is this domain out there anywhere? And right now I'm finding networkingisamazing.com is available. Nobody's using that. So actually I could, if I wanted to, buy this, and it looks like they're doing some sort of rate offer here. Okay. Uh, it's usually in the 10 to 20 dollars you know a year kind of thing um, but it's like okay what's their deal you know we offer a significant insurance standard price of 20 dollars a year you can add additional years annually at 20 dollars a year etc et so yeah so it really usually boils down to about 20 dollars a year i can own a domain name now what i would do is if i wanted to use this i would say make it mine and i would plug in my name uh, my address my phone number etc etc and i literally register this and part of my registration process is usually also pointing this to an IP address that would house my website. Um, as I did this for my wife once upon a time, the exact same thing happened. We bought the domain name, and in there I also spent time pointing this to an IP address that was the uh, that housed the website for her business. Um, this is one way to do this. I can actually go through here and see if it's available. And I might even say, as you see over here, they're giving you alternatives. And I can even do more endings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, there's other ones down here. Large companies sometimes will buy a domain name and buy the alternative endings, as well as uh, very large companies will buy the common misspellings for. Have you ever typed in, you know, goggle and you get to the Google homepage? That's because those other misspellings, those common misspellings are also purchased and pointed to their web servers. Um, so actually at one point we had two domain names for my wife pointed to the same website because she changed her domain name over. So we have both pointing to the same website. Um, it just costs a little bit more a year to do that. But this is kind of like the first piece of domain names. Is it available? And then I could buy it and I end up pointing it to a web server. Well, and I can come in here and look for other ones, you know, Mr. Brown smells funny dot com and see if that's see if that's out here oh looks like that's available you could buy mr brown smells funny dot com and you know have that as the domain name etc etc anyway i could research what's available and potentially buy domain names from here uh 
you know, hoping I found one that, that is available and I would need to plug in information, name, address, password, etc. And I can um, keep some of that private, but then I end up pointing this to the IP address for my web server, the one that's going to host my website. Now, I'm going to jump over to Windows now and let's look at one that is registered. What do I see? So I'm just going to minimize my VM real quick. I'm going to open up my browser over here on the Windows side. And now let's open up. We're going to open up whois.domaintools.com. So who is who is dot domain if I can type domaintools.com. There we go. Now this is going to kind of do the opposite. Um, GoDaddy, I, I buy a domain name and link up my name, address, etc., and I point it to the IP address of my web server. This is going to do the reverse lookup, if you will. I'm now going to look up who owns hack.edu and say, hey, web server world, DNS world, DNS server world, what is hack.edu? So I'm going to try a search, and I might need to put in a um, you know, I'm not a robot thing. You might get a window pop up, a captcha that you might need to indicate you're not a robot. So do that. Once I do that search, this says, okay, this is what we have on file from the DNS records out there of hack.edu. It comes up as being registered to Harrisburg Area Community College. Uh, it was created back in 1995. Um, it was updated, it looks like only a handful of days ago, and it's going to expire roughly next summer. Actually, two summers from now. Two summers from now. Um, it's located on an Amazon Web server that's down in Ashburn, Virginia, etc., etc. This is the kind of information, and actually down here is more contacts and etc. This is the kind of information on the other side. Once this is registered, this can now be queried as to who owns this. This is all part of your domain names. And when we were doing this DNS query back here in the previous process... This is how this DNS query got this information. When this was registered, this stuff was plugged in. So now when DNS queries happen, it can query these databases and say, hack.edu, what's the address for? Boom, here's the address for. And now it can go request, actually talk to that address and say, hey, can I have your web page? Or whatever it is that I'm trying to load. Um, so this DNS query is able to happen because we've registered a domain name, and once it's registered, we can query that domain name and get information from. So if you want to, try looking up a couple other domain names, see if they're available. Try looking up a couple other domain names, see who they're registered to. Um, this all, because you have to plug all this information, all this gets connected together. Um, and you might... You might, as you look up domain names, only get partial information back because it might be private. You might actually pay for some of that information to be private. Uh, my wife's domain name, we pay for a bunch of it to be private. Um, the technical stuff is out there. It has to be known. Um, but some of the context stuff we've kept private. All right. So because all of that is going on, now, when we go to load web pages and query DNS servers, I can get information from that. So I'm going to close my browser here, and on my Windows side, I'm going to go to my command prompt, and I can actually use a command called nslookup, which is basically like DNS lookup, name server lookup. I'm going to do nslookup, and I'm going to plug in www.hack.edu, and go, hey, name server, what do you know as www.hack.edu? And it goes, hey, here's the DNS server that we queried. This is what it knows. Here's the name. Here's the address. There's the two addresses. And it's www.hack.edu. That is the address for www.hack.edu. So when we did a DNS query earlier, it hit the server, DNS server, and responded with this info for me. I can do that little name query myself at my command prompt. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to save this. Because I'm going to put that in my Windows Notepad while I'm here. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go Layer 7. And I'm going to say, I'm going to put here Domain Name. And I'm going to paste that in. There is my NS lookup, my domain name. And the information I get from my domain name lookup. And I'll save that text file. Over on my Linux virtual machine, I can do a similar process. I'm actually going to close my browser out now. I'll close that out, that's fine. At my command prompt here... I'm going to use a similar process, but I'm going to use the dig command. Hey, dig information out of the DNS server for me. 
dig and I'll do the same thing, www.hack.edu. And I will get similar, but a little bit more thorough results here. This is doing the same thing. It's querying the same DNS server. Um, and here it's actually pulling out some information of here's the addresses of, of hack.edu, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's the same kind of results uh, from Linux, from Linux command prompts. I can basically do a DNS query from my command prompt. So I'm going to highlight this stuff. I'm going to say copy. And in my text file I've been doing on my Linux machine, I'll do layer 7, domain name as well. And I will paste that result in and save that. And there is my dig lookup from my uh, Linux command prompt. So save that text file. Save my results there. Boo. And now I have my domain lookup done on both systems. All right, the only thing left to do for our lab is now that I have my results, make sure I have everything, and then submit to D2L. So on my Windows side, real quickly, I'll pull up my text file that I've been using. I'll just scroll through and make sure I have, here's my MAC address, here's my IP4 ping, here's my IP6 ping, and then I need my name lookup results. The other thing I need is my DNS port capture, which I saved into my documents file. There's my DNS port capture. So what I'll do at this point is open my browser, log into D2L. I'm going to open my browser here, log into my hack D2L, and I will submit those two files. I will submit those two files just like you've done with previous labs. This text file here and my DNS port capture. On my Linux machine, let me go back to my virtual machine here. I'm going to make sure I have all the pieces in my text file here. And I do. There's my MAC address. There's my IP4 ping. There's my IP6 ping. And then here is my dig results right there. So again, I'll make sure I save that. I'm going to close that here. And there it is on my desktop. What I will do is I will log into D2L here. I'll open up my browser here. Yes, it's going to give me a warning that it's old. That's fine, whatever. I will go to www.hack.edu, and just like on the Windows side, I will you know maybe open up my hack here. There we go. Log into D2L. Oops, clicking extra buttons here. Log into D2L, and I will submit this file as well. Now, to to do the second submission, let me log in here real quick. La 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 la. Go. I'm not going to save that. I'll open up D2L. To do this second file submission, uh, let me open up R120. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's saying our browser looks old. Got it. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to open up R120. I'm just going to go back to the, the drop boxes. Back to my drop boxes. And I don't want to click the option. Um, if Since you've already submitted stuff, there will be you know submission here re-click on the Chapter 3 lab, and there's an option to add more files. You can actually, you know, in that submission box, load another file in, and you can have multiple submissions. It will allow that. Just on the Dropbox page here, don't look at your submission, because that'll show what you submitted previously. Just click on the Dropbox over here again, and act like you're submitting for the first time, and it'll accept it. So there is our Chapter 3 lab. Now, another little heads up. Um, some of these tasks you didn't hear will be tasks that you're going to do on your lab midterm. So this might be a lab, if you get done, to go back and redo the IP4 settings and the IP6 settings for some practice.